and welcome to Up the Arts, Radio Flange Goblet's cultural magazine program with me, your host, Leonard Plimsoll Jabberwocky. Everyone who is anyone knows Britain's national treasure, Daniel Spine Truncheon. From his debut on the London stage in Bob Leotard's immortal work, Lettuce for Gretchen, to his last film role, where although he appeared ravaged with age and somewhat frail, he gave an age-defying performance of Gusto and Verve as Rupert the Milkman in Lenny Lenny Thighs The Milkman Spilleth Over, opposite a young, spunky and spry Spamina wrist goggles. We are honoured here at Up the Arts to present this clip from a new award-winning documentary about Daniel, where he explains how he stayed relevant and vibrant for so many decades. I don't know when I first discovered it. I think it was a technique used by Sir John Gigglywoods originally, or maybe Marlon Brandish. But once I started, I just couldn't stop. Basically, whether on stage or on camera, I played damn near every role I was ever known for with my chap resting in a jar of jam, or, or, or indeed marmalade. When I played Basil Ruffidge in To Kill a Pelican or Clive Mantelpieces in Of Dice and Phlegm, my trouser companion was placed quite deliberately in a raspberry or gooseberry rougher and more fruity preserve. My famous turn as Sir Lady Gats in Cloth Bunterclap's Cacophony of Balls was performed with my testicles dunked in a jar of mashed prunes. You could say I really plumbed the depths on that one. <laughs> <laughs> of course, in the early days, as I didn't know any better, I simply attached the jam to my belt, utilising some old string or some hair that I'd plucked unknowingly from my leading lady while she slept, and just flopped the old jolly todger right out for all to see. As the years went on, however, and technology caught up with the demands of our craft, special discreet cod pieces were devised that housed both the sweet fruit spreads and my man tackle. Because, of course, in the old days, especially for my fellow performers, it could be quite distracting to have me prance across the boards with my soldier out on manoeuvres, as it were, Dame Celia Nutrition, though, was probably my favourite co-star. No matter how much me old twig and berries splashed around in the guava preserve, her eyes never wandered and her resolve never faltered. Of course, that may have something to do with the fact that she always played all her parts with her bosoms doused in vinaigrette. Who can tell? The less said about Penelope Artichoke, though, the better. She would practically trip over herself at the sight of my one-eyed lizard plopped in some pith-heavy marmalade. Spent the whole fourth act of William Platesphere's Ranault and Julio drooling like a Dutchman. She died later that year of the laundry lady's curse, so I didn't have to put up with her for long. Thank God. Anyway, is that enough for your documentary? Got all the footage you need. I need to change out my strawberry jam down here. There are flies landing on my junk. You're listening to the After Movie Diner with your host, John Cross. That's right, I am John Cross, only my face has been changed to protect the innocent. Hello ladies, baboons, Freemasons, slave masons, wine enthusiasts, bottom enthusiasts, people who aren't really fussed about either, Donalds, Allens, Gladyses, potted plants, people who rub chamois leathers for fun and profit, men who aren't afraid to vomit, Gerald cough in my butts, two-thirds of the Mormon tabernacle rim jobbers, a private group of nuns who like dressing up as waste disposal units, and Pope Obadiah the Fourth, Queen of Pliny. Welcome one... And welcome very much all. Now, before we get started with this week's show, as always, a reminder that you can support the podcast over at patreon.com forward slash after movie diner. That's P A T R E O N dot com forward slash after movie diner. And not only get some great rewards, but get the personal reward of knowing you paid it forward once. You can then smugly lord your goodness over all your friends at your next monthly splash your love juice on the small of my back party. You can also go to aftermoviediner.com and click on the Amazon 
Amazon link in the top right-hand corner. Before you do your Amazon shopping, it costs you absolutely no extra, but for everything you buy, Amazon kicks us a few shekels. Finally, you can go to miskplumbingfixtures.bandcamp.com. That's M-I-S-C, plumbingfixtures.bandcamp.com, and buy the latest album from Miscellaneous Plumbing Fixtures, Former Glory, which features the wondrous Dr. Console on keys, Johnny the Horns Cole on brass, and also the keys, and the clear, bright freedom pipes of Jay Mayo on backing vocals. It's just $6 for 16 tracks, and every penny goes back to keeping after moviediner.com and this podcast alive. So please help us out wherever you can, and if you can't, with money, at least rate and review us wherever the podcast is found, and help spread the word. Sharing on social media really, really, really does help. Even if you think it doesn't, please, please do that. With that, let's start off Sleazy Spader Springtime 3, Tis the Sleazer. Yes, every year you wait anxiously for us to do this, well at least Andy Lund does, and so we couldn't exactly disappoint you all. So let's head now to a small luncheonette on the other side of the moon with two fine fellows who are most definitely not squids for yet another episode of Sleazy Spader Springtime, Tis the Sleazen! Oh, it's Sleazy Spider Springtime Welcome to the show Oh, it's a Sleazy Spider Springtime I want you all to know that If you please, there's James Spader Sleaze And it's got nowhere else to go So loosen all your blouses Give your nose a damn good blow It's Sleazy Spider So yes, let's start and say hello and welcome to this week's episode of the After Movie Diner. We have back on the show uh, two of my favorite recurring guests. Uh, it is the wonderful D. Shaw from the Three Black Geeks podcast and the awesome Mo Porn from No Budget Nightmares. Gentlemen, how have you been? Oh man, you I, you you've you've been slacking, man. You, like normally, I'll come in. You have this like like. 14 paragraph <laughs> intro written out that yeah. I have to mute my microphone because I'm dying laughing the well, whole time. I know it's all soliloquy about how like one of us was like a rugby player for like a, like a year and a half. It's, it's, like a, it's like, you know, when Wes Anderson sets up all the characters of a story. It's almost like that. That's what's kind of. Yeah. <laughs> That's all right. That's no, all right. I, 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 I didn't do it this time around because uh, um, I just didn't. I've been so. In fact, no, actually, I can't explain it. Yesterday evening, uh, I was editing this week's show and I wrote a huge long comedy sketch and I wrote a huge introduction uh, for the show. And I've so therefore I'm just kind of like written out. Um, so I may actually uh, insert an introduction for the pair of you. Uh, which actually now won't fit in because you've you've both just gone. Hey, where was our <laughs> yeah, introduction? No, don't, e- don't even don't even bother at this point. <laughs> what are you what are you, <laughs> what are you doing? You, what we are you gave you the pass. <laughs> or, or just do or do this like this. Wow, thank you, John. That was a wonderful intro. See? <laughs> <laughs> If I if I could just get ten seconds of silence and then Mo, you do your line. <laughs> uh, yeah, thanks. It's, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, it's a wonderful, it's a fantastic introduction. Thank you very much. What 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 what? <laughs> so yes, uh, on uh, this episode, as it is the uh, second episode of Sleazy Spader Springtime Three, tis the sleazen. That's the uh, that's the <laughs> tagline uh, for this. Last year it was the sleasoning, and this year it is tis the sleason. Um, uh, sleasoning. That sounds sli- re- that sounds like a really rough porno. Yes, it's the kind of thing that James Spader would have in his basement. Yeah, I was, was going to say also starring James Spader. Also starring James Spader on uh, VHS in one of those big old cardboard boxes, like not even. The sleeves and not even the big clamshells, but like the big unwieldy cardboard boxes that with like the faded image on the front that porn used to come in back in the day. That's that's what the sleasoning would be in, I feel like. That would be the thing. Um but yeah, we are <laughs> we are now trawling through four more James Spader films. Uh, last week uh, we had the interesting TV movie from the early eighties, Starcrossed, which 
I have to say, guys, if if you haven't seen it, listen to this week's episode when it comes out and uh, track that down on YouTube because that's some balmy fucking shit on that in that movie. I can tell you that is some weird stuff right there. Um, and then uh, this week, well, Mo, why don't you tell us uh, what is the name of this movie? You were the one who picked it, so. Uh, <clears throat> Did I? Oh, yeah, you uh, picked it. You were right. like, oh, let's do it for this just because of the title. And never oh, have right. you been so wrong. <laughs> yeah. So I, Okay, so if I get it. I get it. You're setting me up as the fall guy here. Fuck I understand. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Uh, it's, my, yeah. It's, 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 it's my show. <laughs> you behave. No, you carry yeah. on. <laughs> uh, this week... Uh, for this for this episode, we decided. On, well, I guess I guess technically I decided on uh, 2001's "Speaking of Sex." Yeah, which, to be fair to you, Mo, has quite the pedigree because it is directed uh, by John, uh, portrait of a serial killer McNaughton, uh, who also made the um, uh, shamelessly entertaining movie "Wild Things," uh, which also had a Bill Murray cameo in it. Um, and it has a phenomenal cast. Well, not a phenomenal cast, but at least a cast full of people that you're like, well, I could watch these guys kind of do something. Like, no, no, right. You know what I mean? You've got James Spader. You've got Bill Murray. You've got... Um, a Lara- horribly cast... A horribly miscasted Jay Moore. Yeah. Oh, La- my God. Thank you. Lara <laughs> Flynn Boyle. And you've got Catherine O'Hara. Like, you've got people there where you're like, well, even if it's a piece of shit, I could probably watch these guys do something. What I didn't realize right. is just what kind of piece of shit this would be and the fact oh, that right. all of them thought they were in a much better movie than they were. Uh, <laughs> no, yeah, I mean, I mean you're, I not, you're not wrong, but seriously, if you, you, like, like you said, you look at the cast, the cast alone screams, this should be pretty good. You know? And then you remember, this is like six years before half of these guys made it big. So uh, so they weren't doing much of anything because you, you've got, you know, Nick Offerman, who, uh, I mean, was a known entity at the time, but not, like, particularly famous, you know, or, like, Megan Mullally, who, like, those two, you know, they're married. They come as a pair anyway. Um, you <laughs> I know. hear they do come as a pair. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's all that, it's all that is, sex, it, you know. Really <laughs> yeah. It was really seeing uh, weird seeing Megan there before she became what she became, like, a, probably, I think, a year and a half later. You know what I mean? To what we all know what she is today. So you're right. It's a lot of, before a lot of these people hit their stride of what they were. We, we've well, seen them in this. Well, Will and Grace, well, except, no, Will, no, Will, Will and Grace was around, yeah. Yeah, Will and Grace started in 98, so she had actually been around for... Damn, really? Yeah. Man. That's how long I haven't been giving a shit about that show? Wow. <laughs> yes. True story. See, you and I True have not story. been giving a shit about that show for 20 years. 20 years. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Years. No, look. Me included. Me included. Now, look, ha- look, hang I, on a second. Was I, she I, on I, from the very beginning? Was she on the first season? You know what? Yeah, I think you're it's, asking the two wrong she guys. <laughs> no, 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 no. Look, she was. I can answer that because my wife absolutely loves that show. But... But she doesn't watch every episode. She knows enough. I think. I think. You know what I mean. So yeah. whatever. So what? You're, so what you're saying is that you're a big fan of the show, but you're blaming it on your wife. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> look, you know, look. I will ask my hey, just, hey, isn't that what most guys know. do with Grey's Anatomy? Where they're like, you know, I don't I, watch that I, shit, I, but they I, know I, every we, fucking we, thing about it. We do that a lot. We do that. We play like the deflection game. Like, there's a show actually on their last season now. It's called The Originals. I like, yeah, man, I don't watch the originals. I watch every episode with my wife. I watch every fucking episode with my wife. But let me guess, you like the Vampire Diaries more. Oh, God, I don't. Look, <laughs> here's the part. I, 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 I should probably but, explain uh, that to John, if he, because yeah, I'm guessing he doesn't know. The Originals no. is a spin-off show of the Vampire. It's a spin-off show. Yeah, yeah spin-off I, show. I, I, no, I, I left the Vampire Diaries in the dust with my ex, thank God. Oh. Dude, here's the funny thing about that. I know grown men, grown black men, that looked at me like, oh my God, you watched the originals? The real motherfucking show is the Vampire Diaries. Like, what? I'm sorry. Oh, what? <laughs> sorry, the real what? fucking show is Buffy. I think we all know that. And, Actually, uh, you know what's yeah, funny thing? Now, that's the fun part. I know a lot of guys that watch Buffy. Oh, I watched, I watched, I watched the uh, shit out of Buffy at university. I did it. I didn't. Everybody I never liked it. Everybody would have that conversation. I wouldn't be in it. 
I know. I look. Here's the funny thing. I know people in the see. No, actually, you know what I did? I while everybody was watching Buffy, I had to be the weird motherfucker and watch Charmed because <laughs> the, only, you know? the only episode yeah. of Charmed I ever watched was the one that Bruce Campbell cameoed on. It was back in the day when I used to just watch any <laughs> shit that Bruce Campbell would do, and I watched like, like the double you. episode that he's on. Well, see, I remember back in the '90s when everybody was watching Buffy and. Um, I, I like they'd start talking about it. And I'd be like, man, Paul Rubens was hilarious in that. <laughs> and like, because like, I love the movie. I don't, I never understood the appeal of the show. I loved the movie. You see, I was an <laughs> Alison Hannigan fan before the whole vampire willow thing. Like the, once mm-hmm. the show started to make Hannigan like uh, purposely sexy, like nerd sexy. And then she becomes a lesbian and a vampire and a twin and everything else. And a witch and all this other stuff. Like later on in the show, I was like, "Okay, I'm fine with that." But like, I was I was w- Willow all the way before the the show caught up to her uh, sexiness. That was uh, that was my like life. wife. But, you sound uh, exactly like my wife. She said the same fucking thing. You, I tell you what, D, your wife and me would get on like a house on fire. We could just sit around, talk about Hannigan all day. <laughs> send you and Mo out to play in the yard. Yo. <laughs> 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 You, you guys, oh you guys run up and you're like, hey, we need more water for our water pistol. We're like, the adults are talking now, guys. Go back at it. <laughs> what about season four? Oh my god, <laughs> like that type, like that, that type of um, yeah, right. conversation. Um, no, I, I hate, I hated Buffy. Um, people that talked about Buffy all the time because I was excluded out of the conversation. I hated it so much because it reminded me of when I was in um high school. And good God, I hated this so much. Because I had to check my own self at this point. There were a bunch of these people. They were like, the only, because I went to private school at the time. And the people that I, you know, at least the kids I was with at, at go to school every day. They would talk about only one show and one show only. And they'd be totally into it. And that's motherfucking Dawson's Creek. I had zero <laughs> idea what was going on. I'm stuck there hearing these people talk about Dawson's Creek. I was going to say, here's that, show, my, that, that show is too white for me. Yeah, right. Wow, I know. Yeah. But the point, the, here's the thing, though, Mo. I told him one day, I was like, so, du- so Dwayne, what do you watch? I'm like, man, I I just watched Toonami. I like Dragon Ball Z. The guy goes, oh, man, that's cool. One girl, the, gir- the girl, the girl I had a crush on looked at me, ugh, you gay. Wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> How do I like Dragon Ball? <laughs> it, I had to check myself. And finally, it, I got to like, I got one day, he's like, hey, D, why do you give a shit? You watch Dragon Ball Z. They watch Dawson's Creek. They cry over, I don't want to wait till my life. <laughs> you know, they, they cry over that right. song. You don't. And listen, and listen D, right. you, you came out the victor in the end. I mean, time, time has, has told the story. And, like, Dragon Ball Z is still hip and cool. And who's going to conventions dressed up as Dawson? You know what I mean? Or, well, uh, well uh, uh, you know what? Uh, <laughs> as I slowly <laughs> raise my hand. Uh, I mean, I do. Uh, I, 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 I go to the local Comic-Con convention dressed as characters from Dawson's Creek. I would love, I would love to see somebody just all of us are gonna dress up like people off of like like Dawson's Creek or uh fucking uh Gilmore Girls or some shit. Just so everybody <laughs> go why. You know what I mean? Uh, you mean <laughs> the character the re- of the Gilmore Girls, Yanni I. Isn't that her name? <laughs> Yanni I okay. or whatever her name is. Oh please like, don't. You know what? Please I, don't. I'm joking, I'm joking. But no, so <laughs> let's let's bring this back around again. Uh, just one last oh, yeah. point about Buffy is that it doesn't bear rewatching. Like I feel it was something you had to watch at the time, you had to go through the cycle with it, and then it's not something I've ever put back on or tried to watch. It's it's just oh, it's man. not it's something so go- it's so goddamn nineties that like I can't right. handle Right, yeah. right, right. But anyway, um, talking about Megan no, no, Mullally, like... talking about Megan Mullally, and talking about TV shows, uh, people might not know this because they might only know it from Will and Grace, or you know, um, uh, wasn't she on Parks and Rec as well, and some other stuff? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but like, she was hospital. She was hospital. She, she, she was hilarious on that show to me. M- Mullally has been around like forever. Like she's been acting since the early '80s, and. Uh, she has shown up in all the TV shows you can imagine in the 80s, Murder, She Wrote, and Wings, and various other things. But two things I want to point out. First of all, she was on a TV series that only ran one year that Ellen Burstyn did. Who knew that Ellen Burstyn had a show? Like, the Ellen Burstyn show. Like, Ellen Burstyn, to me, always plays, like, incredibly troubled and Harold, Harold sort of... 
harrowing women, right? Strong, but still troubled and harrowing women. How did she get, like, a Mary Tyler Moore show in 1986? Like, let's put Ellen Burstyn the lead of a show. Megan Mullally is the psychic. Like, I don't fucking know. I'd, wa- I'd watch that. Right. <laughs> well, I would I'd watch, watch it. it. I would watch it now. I'd watch the, I'd watch the fuck out of that. I, w- I want to know. Who, <laughs> anything, I want to know which, which easy, studio that came take, up with that. Easy, John. Anything to take down Cosby in the 80s. They tried everything. <laughs> they tried everything. They bumped yeah. Up, yeah. <laughs> Little did they know it would take until the 2010s. Yeah, right. Exactly. Wait, wait, wait. wait, wait. We can run. No, because you know there's one guy at CBS kicks down the door. Wait a minute. We can. We could have reported those rapes. Son of a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, and then the other thing. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing that I, <laughs> the other thing that I wanted, right. I just other, see this guy walking through the door with with, with the uh, manicure. Of course, of course, you realize, you realize now that because you're talking about like you know you mentioned Alan Burstyn, so now I'm imagining you know this comedy based around her character for Requiem for a Dream right. <laughs> <laughs> with Megan Mullally as the sidekick who's yeah. just gathering up speed pills for her. Yeah, either that or it's her character from The Exorcist, and her Megan Mullally plays a possessed woman who keeps <laughs> urinating on a <her> carpet. <laughs> Exactly. There's a whole Your there's a, director every episode. It's funny, yeah. Ep, 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 episode episode three is just let Jesus fuck you. I'm like, what is what is this show? Um, <laughs> and then the other thing that I wanted to bring up about Megan Mullally is um, that a few weeks ago on the show we covered two Peter Weller detective films from the '90s, uh, in which Peter Weller um, was an LA cop in the '90s being very 90s and Peter Wellerish, And in one, it has a very noticeable and probably highly embarrassing scene at this point to Megan Mullally where he goes and meets like a friend of the murder victim and uh, it's Megan Mullally as a flight attendant uh, with a Hawaii fixation who keeps like talking about <laughs> Hawaii even though he hasn't asked her about Hawaii at all. And she's doing this like really weird voice and it's not like normal <laughs> Megan Mullally voice she's trying to do like a lower version of it so she's all like in Hawaii they say mahalo and I'm like what is she what is she doing what is Megan Mullally doing in this movie so yeah totally bizarre easy. Get the, your, that's easy getting the fucking paycheck yeah right <laughs> Well, not for the scene she was in, um, but uh, she probably got, well, what I, what I, she, she probably what got paid a the, half uh, a Subway sandwich and a quick snog with Peter Weller, I would imagine. That's probably what she got paid. What I, what I want to know is about the show she did in 1992 called Fish Police. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That is oh, the name oh, it was I thought a... I would never hear again. Yeah, I never, I've never, I've never heard of this. Oh my god! It came out during that weird time where everybody was trying to take down The Simpsons with a different animated show. <laughs> so, so what you're saying I, is Mulally has I, tried to take down uh, Cosby, and now she's trying to take down The Simpsons. Is that what it is? Oh my god! You know what? Yeah, I guess so. Because but, I guess so. It's funny. I remember like the show Family Dog. I remember this other show called Capital Critters, and I remember yeah, I remember, was, I, like, remember I remember Capital Critters, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Capital Critters could have worked, but it was dumb as fuck. Um, yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. I don't remember shit about Fish Police, but I knew it came in prime time. Mm. That's all. I, I was too. I, I guess I was a little bit too young before to remember anything about that. Wow. I wasn't ready for that. Really wasn't wondering for that. I, I, really I, I, I won't even tell you what I think yeah. Fish Police was really about. Uh, <laughs> 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 so anyway, yes. Looking at speaking of sex, you would think. Um, it's the director, as I said, coming off the back of uh, Wild Things, um, doing another sort of ensemble cast movie with sort of twists and turns and stuff like that, and it's all kind of building up to a climax kind of thing. And you would think, okay, maybe this might be worth a damn. <laughs> you um, said climax. <laughs> <laughs> he said orgasm. Um, <laughs> it's almost like when we're naming uh, Gaspar Noe movies, because um, Gaspar Noe just uh, clearly uh, just uh, went like, uh, uh, well, fuck it. I'm just going to call my next movie Clitoris and have done with it. Um, but because, it, it, <laughs> you know, anything to be fucking shocking to the, you know. Uh, it's know, it's a three hour uh, monologue about a talking clit. Yeah, right. Hello. Uh, <laughs> it talks just like that. Exactly. <laughs> Hello, I'm a 
clitoris. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so um, no, yeah, I, I, find, I find this conversation very <laughs> stimulating. <laughs> ah, man. You know what? It is, you know what I am? I am the highly sick champion forever. <laughs> but seriously, <laughs> like, but seriously, folks, they can't find me. They never can find me. <laughs> circles, oh circles, fellas, circles. <laughs> so, <laughs> which uh, brings it brings it back to this movie because apparently one of the things that Lara Flynn Boyle taught. See now, okay. So here's the thing: the big <laughs> thing that this gets wrong in terms of James Spader, right? is that it gets it right in the sense that James Spader has sex with everyone. That's how it gets it right. It gets it wrong it, that Lara Flynn Boyle was ever able to teach James Spader anything. I'm sorry. Right. I'm right. sorry. You know, I, James right. Spader taught her all of the things. She didn't yeah. teach him anything. That is where this movie gets it wrong. They're like, oh, before Lara Flynn Boyle, he was a, like a novice. And I'm like... Uh, that doesn't really ring true. I mean, yes, okay, she was in Threesome with one of the Baldwin brothers, but that doesn't mean she has all the sexual playbook that Spader has. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. That I doesn't, mean, I, she, that I, doesn't I, mean she was in a Threesome with one of the Baldwin brothers. <laughs> no, no, she is in the movie. <laughs> no, I, I, I know. I'm, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. <laughs> she is. And, and not only that, but with the Christian one, Stephen Baldwin, the floppy, blonde-haired... Uh, the one who hates the other two. Oh man, that's so sad. It's the, you just had to mention that he's Christian now. Oh God. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's Christian and Republican, and he hates Alec doing Trump on SNL, and he tries to make himself I mean, relevant. Wow. Who knew of all the brothers, it was going to be Stephen to be the one like, hey, hey, Jesus, man. Who knew it was going to be him? Right, the guy who. The guy who spent most of his life, like, doing... What's funny about it is he did, like, loads of really weird 90s erotic thrillers. Like, that's, like, straight-to-video yeah, erotic like that, thrillers. And I'm like, really? That guy's the guy who has, like, a, a, a moral heard, compass now? <laughs> Go fuck yourself. I heard... Uh, when I heard about that, I was like, dude, you were one of the usual suspects. Get the fuck out of my face. Right. Are you serious? You? <laughs> yeah, doesn't make any sense, does it? But, uh... So, yeah, so speaking of sex, get several things wrong. But, D, you had said on Facebook um, that you kind of liked it after you watched it. So I only assume that you watched the wrong film. But why don't you, no, 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 no. <laughs> why don't you give us um, a, a rundown of, of the film a little bit, just a quick kind of snippet of the plot, and then sort of lead us into kind of what you enjoyed about it. Just because I think we should give it right. a fair crack of the whip if... if uh, if oh. uh, Mo and I are going to come down hard on it, and yes, they were both in oh, no, 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 no. oh, I'm going to come hard on it. <laughs> oh, yeah. don't worry. <laughs> While don't I worry. crack the whip. I yeah. I, here's the thing. When I say I like it, I mean I liked it as a, you know what? That was a piece of shit, but at least I laughed a few times. No, D, so I, I got it. it. I've got it. You <laughs> liked it because you watched it and you went, the way those white guys run around is really funny. Like, that was it. You were like, oh, no, that white no, guy's no, funny. No, no, no. <laughs> oh, God, no. There were only, all right, there, there were, all right, first off, this whole, the whole concept kind of reminds me of, um, not reminds me of anything. It's just like, I remembered during the late 90s into the early 2000s, we did have a lot of these, uh, what you call these quirky, comedies and sometimes they were centered around sex and usually they're not funny they're mildly funny this wasn't and make let me make it that very clear this wasn't nowhere close to being hilarious or nothing like that it was just like oh i get it it's quirky that was supposed to work by it one of the problems that i really really had was that spader as much as he was kind of in his own right acting his ass off it wasn't him you know what i mean it just didn't feel like him yeah you know, I, it it really didn't feel like him. The the fact that um, Spader, uh, <laughs> he was he was where... sweaty and he was sexual, yeah. but in all the wrong ways, like in, in, in almost in like <laughs> an anti Spader way. That's that's what it's kind of funny. It's kind of funny. Spader does come. Spader, at least what I know of him today, he is a bit of like you know almost a borderline germaphobe. You know, really he's neurotic as as hell and all that shit. So it kind of yeah, this is more of present day Spader than eighties. He'll fuck your daughter and look at you in the face, Spader. You know what I mean? So <laughs> this is a whole you know what I'm saying. So you have to kind of pace yourself into it. The fact that um, the one thing I did like uh, that was the one thing. 
that got me about this movie that the fact that uh, he was a therapist, like, well, of course he was. But um, Jay Moore, and Jay, basically, um, I forgot the name of the the the, the lead, the lead lady name. Yeah, she's, the, name. she's uh, been in a bunch of stuff, but she's not sort of well of known. Her name is Melora yeah. Walters, and you've probably seen her in Hold a on. bunch of stuff, but she's fairly nondescript in the sense that. I've seen photos of her with brown hair and dark hair and blonde hair, and, and you kind of look at it and you go, well, this could all be the same woman, but it also could be 15 different women. <laughs> like, very, very... Exactly. Uh, I mean, she's fine. She's entertaining in the film, but, like, uh, yeah, just sort of a nondescript thing, and I, and I didn't recognize the name at all. Yeah, and, you know, um, her and Jay Moore are having problems in their relationship. Um, Jay Moore can't get it up, which makes me laugh because I'm like, all right, I can believe that. Right. Um, <laughs> That's the most believable aspect of the movie. It's <laughs> like the most believable aspect of this whole fucking movie. <laughs> Jay Moore um, himself, he just, um, for whatever reason, they're having problems in a relationship. And Lara Flynn Boyle is a, a marriage counselor who's been divorced three times. And, okay. Right, but you see, that right there is meant to be a joke. Like, the joke is meant to be like the, the yeah, screenwriter right. sat down and yeah. went, She's a marriage counselor and she's been divorced three times. And what you think to yourself is um, someone like a Steve Martin or someone like a Woody Allen or someone like that could, who wrote it could make that funny. Like they could make a recurring joke of her having been yeah. divorced. This just kind of says it and expects, like has Jay Moore kind of go, well, what the hell are we doing here? She's a divorcee. What does she know about uh, marriage counseling? Like, it doesn't know how to make that a joke. Do you know what I mean? Like in the script. And that's the problem. It doesn't because like, um, because, because my, of course my wife was watching this because it has Jane Spader. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, she was watching this with, and uh, she for me, it's like, yeah, the woman that counseled us, she was divorced. I'm like, yeah, she was. And I thought to myself, wait a minute. How often does that happen? <laughs> right. Like, wait a minute. Yeah, well, g- g- given the divorce rates in this country, I'd say about 50% of the time. <laughs> you know what, Bob? I, you know I wasn't ready for the intelligent answer for that. <laughs> but has, has, has Nobody anyone... ever expects intelligence out of me. <laughs> we're, we're, has anyone seen that movie, and weirdly enough, talking about Megan Mullally and Will and Grace, But it's because it's got one of the Will and Grace guys in it. Um, but it's called uh, Free Enterprise, and it's about the two Trekkies who meet Shatner, and Shatner's crazy... Um, and keeps pitching them a music ju- musical Julius Caesar with him playing all the parts. Have you seen that <laughs> <Wow>. movie? <laughs> no, but it sounds great. It is. It's absolutely amazing. It's it's called Free Enterprise, and it's it's um it's basically like two neurotic. Why are we talking about that movie? <laughs> right, two neurotic Trek fans who like meet Shatner, and he ends up being mad. But in that movie, one of them has an ex girlfriend who he can't stop having sex with because he's just like, oh, I can't be bothered to go out dating. I'm just, I'll hang out with her and have sex with her instead. And she wants to be a um, psychologist, but she's completely crazy and has way more problems than anyone else. And it's a really good observation because I feel like therapists in general, or the people who want to go ahead and become therapists, are really the people with all the problems. <laughs> Yeah, 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 and I get it. You know, it, uh, you know, I know somebody's defense on that. Well, they're divorced; they know how not to get divorced or something. Okay, sure, yeah, I guess I know what you mean. You know, you know, every now and then people fuck up and they give with the wrong person. They can give you that experience, but this is three times you got divorced, and the whole time I am waiting for the joke, and the joke never comes. That's the real big problem about that. They make note of that. I think at least three times in the movie they make note that learn. Her Flynn Boyle was married three times. But anyway, she refers the uh, wife to go to a depression counselor, which is James Spader. And James Spader is being quirky. Uh, oh, wait, yeah. James Spader actually is about to get divorced from his wife, Megan Mullally, because uh, he was caught sleeping with somebody. With, yeah, he's, you know, he's, he's been called, cheating on her, like, multiple times. He on her, whatever. And um, finally, um, he's like, he, like, he left his wife that morning. And this is weird scene to have in the elevator. Now, they kind of do the elevator scene right where they're going up on the elevator, and it's like all crookedy and like like it's all rickety and shit. And it, you don't know if they're gonna make it to their um to the top um floor. They get they, this is long ass scene where they get where they try to say, wait a minute, you're my patient, and all this back and forth, back and forth, all oh, quirky comedy shit. Real talk the whole time. I'm like, hurry the fuck up. Right? Hurry the fuck up. <laughs> Just hurry <laughs> up. Yeah, completely. So finally, they go to this whole scene of... They go to this whole back and forth scene. She gets back on the elevator. 
James Spader, because James Spader said, you know what? I'm fucking something tonight. And just to be honest with you, <laughs> when James Spader wants something, he's taking it. Come on, y'all. <laughs> y'all know what's happening. Come on. Like, don't, don't act like y'all don't think that's going to happen. Y'all seen less than zero. You know how this is going to fucking end. He walks, he, he walks on the motherfucking, uh, he gets on the uh, ele- uh, elevator, and he stops the elevator, and he starts banging on the elevator. And because of all this, this creates... Uh, a problem because it's like breaking parent. Um, I'm not parent. I'm breaking on uh, patient. Um, doctor confidentiality or some bullshit like that. It well, gets well, kind of lost. Well, this is the other. Loose. Yeah. So, so what happens is Lara Flynn Boyle is their marriage counselor in current when she finds out that um, Spader and her slept. Spader and the the patient slept together. Um, decides. Oh, you should sue him. Um, because it damaged you and it damaged your marriage and you were trying to fix your marriage and da-da-da-da-da and you should sue him and so on and so forth. So what's weird about it is that there is a reason for that and I'm going to give it away because I strongly recommend that no one ever watches this movie ever. Even out of curiosity, never watch it. But at the end of the movie, it transpires that the woman he cheated on at a uh, doctor's conference or therapist conference um, was Lara Flynn Boyle and uh, she really loves him, and he really loves her, and she was trying to get uh, this woman to sue him um, out of spite in order to all oh, this blah, 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 goes on and on and on, right? So what you're exactly... <laughs> <laughs> but what's, what's amazing is this, is that not only in the setup are there, are there no jokes, like they can't find... They, they think there are jokes, like they've written jokes in, but they're just not... None of them are hitting. It's like seeing a stand-up performance where you go, I know what he's trying to do, but... It's like an open mic night. Right, yeah. right, right. Mm-hmm. So it's like that. And then... But then what happens is they go, well, the rest of the movie then is going to be this um, uh, deposition. And you're like, well, wait a minute... All of a sudden, like people's life, uh, people's livelihoods are at risk, and you know, people's uh, 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 marriages are at risk, and people are falling out of things. And then, but then it tries to also have like all this uh, weird sex farce humor, where a friend of the husband is trying to sell uh, the deposition tape where she explains the sex they had as a as a sex tape, uh, even though that would never work. Um, that he he's never th- there's, now, there's a whole it, thing now, where. There's a whole thing where they're in the deposition and the woman's giving her uh, testimony and, like, everyone's getting hot under the collar and they all have to keep running to the bathroom. Like, I'm can, like, I, wait can I minute, state wait for the record that that's, was... that that's the only fucking scene in the entire movie I laughed at was Bill Murray <laughs> get, getting up from the table and covering up his crotch with his papers? With his papers that I like, like, just it the was... physical comedy of that alone was the only thing in this movie I found particularly Bill Murray, funny. Bill Murray seemed to be the only thing in this movie that really kind of I want to you know I hate to use the word delivered because that makes it sound that he was like hilarious no not by a long shot but that's but, the thing he was playing the yeah. straight man for the most part yeah he was playing the straight man for the most part he all of his lines that were supposed to be like that that came off deadpan it worked it yeah. worked with him. like it felt like out of everybody else that had these set up things where it, it like the joke was either said and nobody you didn't laugh at it or it was like haha <laughs> You know, you got that out of you. Bill Murray, when he said something, was like, <laughs> all right, there you go. There's a real laugh. You know what I mean? Yeah, although I, although I have to say something, guys. Uh, it was incredibly disturbing. I never, ever in my entire life needed to see Bill Murray's O face. That was something that was never <laughs> anything that I wanted to see. You know and what? I certainly never needed to see Catherine O'Hara's. So, like, that whole Speak sequence in the hot tub was uh, was just disturbing. Uh, was hot. Thank you. <laughs> I had to, how do you think I felt? I had to describe that to um, CJ. I was like, yeah, like, so what y'all watching? Like, yeah, I had to watch this movie, speaking of sex. And Chris does this nervous laugh where it's almost like, I don't know what the fuck that is. It's like, <laughs> what's that? I'm like, um, so I had to tell him what it was. I was like, basically, uh, you know Kevin's mom off of Home Alone? Yeah, she gets eaten out by Bill Murray in a hot tub. <laughs> wow, what the... <laughs> The trouble and is, I, the I, trouble I, is, I, is now, I, I, now everyone wants to go see that movie, and and please just don't go see this movie. See the, is it, that's what I said. You know what? Honestly, what honestly, that's, that's, that's like it. that's like trying to sell about Schmidt by saying that there's a Kathy Bates nude scene in it. I mean, come on. <laughs> that's the only thing that got me to watch it. Uh, I, me too. 
Dude, I was watching it and it just happened. Like, wait, wait, wait. What just happened? Wait, wait, what? <laughs> It was hot. What happened here? Listen, ra- ra- rather her than Hope Davis. Uh, hey, Cap. <laughs> oh my gosh! You know what? Um, but during that whole time, there was um, all right. There, now you may have seen the black guy. That's one of my favorite people in the world. That was Phil, Phil Lamar. Lamar. Yeah, Phil great Lamar was in this voice actor. Yeah, I interviewed him a couple. I interviewed him once, and I was hoping to interview him actually this past convention, but he didn't show up. There's a lot of bullshit that happened. Oh, so but, um, he is in Free Enterprise, the movie I was just telling you about. He's in Free Enterprise. Wow. He plays one of the nerds wow. in Free Enterprise. He's awesome in that. that oh, big sense. surprise. This guy who plays voices in a lot of sci-fi <laughs> shows <laughs> plays a nerd. Who would have thought that? I think it's the guy you're talking oh. about. I'm going to double check, but I think it is. But, uh, but, well, I but, have that IMDb page open already because uh, I've been reading about that movie since it's much more interesting. Um, and yeah, he is he is in that. Yeah, he's, Yo, he was, in that movie. Uh, it, what's so funny about it? In Free Enterprise. He, he yeah, let's got, talk they, about that movie. They go to Toys R Us <laughs> and he wants to get kiss figures. Like he <laughs> he wants to buy kiss figures in Free Enterprise. Yes. The um, the thing that gives me about Phil Lamar is that he doesn't have that many lines. It's just more of his facial expressions that actually work in that whole scene because because there's like at well, one they do point do one they do one dick joke at his expense because his name is Johnson. Yeah, it's Johnson. And I, I I hate to be that person because I don't laugh at it when somebody says Johnson and it's like, huh? Yes. What? Like <laughs> like that wasn't funny, but because I was the pride for a minute when that happened, here's me. <laughs> Okay, there you go. You got that. You got, <laughs> you got, you got, you got that chuckle. Right, but you, you see, sh- like, yet again, the Big Lebowski knows how to do it. This movie does not know how to do it. Like, no, there's it, a way it, to make a joke about a Johnson, and this movie completely failed on every count. And I think that, and I think that was really the big problem about this movie. There was a lot of shit that could have actually worked. It was just a little bit more funny, or at least the jokes were structured better. Would, way, if it, do you know what I was trying? Do you know what I felt like is I felt like if this movie was being made today, right? Um, Because it just, this movie just comes out at the point where the sort of improv comedy thing that we kind of see now all the time sort of hadn't really started yet. And if it had, it had only been a couple of movies. If this movie was coming out now and they got the same script, they would be sat in that table doing the deposition scene and you would have Catherine O'Hara and Bill Murray and everyone be like, Fuck this! Let's throw this out and like let's do our own thing. Like we can come up with okay. lines and jokes funnier than this. And still, guys, keep... I have some, I have some bad news. What's that? Uh, Phil Lamar is not in the Big Lebowski. No, I know <laughs> what. <laughs> I know he's not in the Big Lebowski. <laughs> what? <laughs> What's that got to do with anything, Mo? Yeah. Oh my God, Mo! Mo, go you sit, go been... sit in the hot box or something. I love how Mo just made it fucking clear that he would rather watch toast come out of a toaster than this fucking movie. <laughs> he just made it official. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I did spend about half of this movie masturbating, so. Kathleen <laughs> yeah. O'Hara. Kathleen O'Hara, I hope. <laughs> but you know what? There's just what, the, you know, in that deposition scene, because the deposition scene is the movie. Like, it a- goes on for hours. It's Ad painful. nauseum, yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and and like I say, and and because this is not the spader we're not used to, um, we have to see him the whole time act embarrassed, and he does it all right. You know what I mean? He does it, uh, you know, fair enough. But well, he does the, neurotic pretty good. Yeah, he does. He does it pretty good yeah. because he is himself neurotic himself. You know what I mean? So, yeah, but I, the one but thing I feel that, like he's gone over the top in this though. Like I feel like he's yes, doing and it. not in a good way. No. Not in a good way. Yeah, no. not in a good way at all. The one thing I will say is this. I thought the nicknames for the penis, the, they did this whole thing, this whole build up, because she didn't want to say penis or dick or anything. She said, Mr. Happy. And finally, to describe Spader's dick was Mr. Majestic. I think that's what it was. Yeah. And I said to myself, that's not. That's not in the lines. That's really what James Spader calls his name. <laughs> I, I, I thought he I, called I, it I, the Spadenator. That's what I thought he called it. <laughs> You've just been spaded. That's what I feel like he said. Uh, <laughs> you lie there and I'm going to spade you to the bed. I, no, I have no idea. I, I, I assume that, yes, maybe Mr. Majestic is the name of his... 
penis for real. Yeah. Like maybe they had yeah. another word for it, and Spader was like, um, "Can we just call it what it really is, majestic, and move on?" Um, <laughs> or or, or it's like, "No, you can't use that. Why not? Why not? That's copyright. There's a copyright on yeah, that, and I, I would have, not allow." <laughs> I have a lawyer who routinely uh, checks on my penis uh, and uh, updates her uh, contract. Or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, did, I know uh, what I'm trying I, to say, but it's it's uh, a Monday evening, and it's we're talking about this movie. And <laughs> you know what? Uh, Honestly, not... I've been having much. I've been having much more fun just listening to you kind of peter out on that one. So, <laughs> no, 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 it's true. My wife did say this because uh, I guess she just she just hadn't seen all the Spader movies like I have. She's a big f- fan of Spader just because. Um, well. Recently, she's more recent a fan of him. Um, but she likes she, the black. Um, she like, oh, she loves it. She loves that show. I I like it too. Um, oh, I you like only it too. like it because it's got the word black in it. <laughs> nah, nah, no, 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 no. Well, let's get her fucking right, sir, sir. I love Jane Spader, and no, I was actually raised kind of on Spader because I didn't know this until my dad refer my dad. Say, hey, do you watch Blacklist? I'm like, nah, yada, yada, yada. And he mentioned that Spader was in it. And I'm like, hey, Dad, you like Spader, don't you? My dad said, oh, that's my boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I thought to myself, wait a minute, D, when was the first time you saw Less Than Zero? With your, with your dad, yeah. What about the cool kids? With your dad, yeah. What about um, what about that movie where Rob Lowe? <laughs> oh, Bad Rob Influence? Bad influence, like remember bad influence, like yeah. Who you watched it with? My dad. Who you watched some practice with? I didn't watch that show, but who watched it all the time? My dad. Oh my god, my dad's a spader. My dad's a spader file. <laughs> I didn't not know that. A but spader got... file. <laughs> <laughs> I did not know that. But um, uh, but yeah. So my wife is just new to it. So when she saw um uh, on spader, you know, of course having sex in this movie. Here's my wife. Well, there it goes. That's on my checklist. I seen Spader's ass. I was waiting on that. <laughs> oh wow, you can, you can see Spader's ass in like nine nine percent of his ninety exactly. percent of his filmography. His uh, uh, ass and his uh, pasty ginger white chest is out in quite a few of his films. <laughs> um, and what's funny about the blacklist is because I kind of tried to watch the first season i watched probably through most of the first season and my problem with the blacklist is is i'm absolutely adoring james spader walking around drinking out of very very tiny coffee cups uh licking his (laughs) lips routinely flouncing around in flappy scarves wearing trilbies and practically going down on everyone he meets i'm having a huge amount of fun watching that everyone else in that show sucks balls in the first season i'm watching and the lead actress whoever that is where you're like well is is she his daughter is are they going to be lovers like what's the whole secret here and clearly she was meant to be his daughter and then like when the writers went oh shit everyone's figured out uh, what what it was straight away they then had to like try and backpedal and do something else but um oh i hate it only thing i hated about the show because you could tell they had to rewrite a lot of the shit and you could tell and I only have I have a problem with a few shows that do this. You could tell that there was a lot of fl- fan influence on the direction of the show. You know right. what I mean? Yeah, oh, yeah, completely, That's completely. And, and and what what was hilarious was I was watching that whole first season. And I'm like, she's wearing a wig. That hair looks like a wig. That hair looks, and like Kim sent me with. She's like, it's not a wig. It's not a, like it's her real hair. And I'm like, if it's her real hair, she has wig hair. She has hair that like just looks like a wig. And it was I couldn't. Like, I couldn't get into the show because I was looking at the hair going, that is just enormous. That's like a mad helmet. But, I mean, it's it's long woman's hair, but, like, it's also, like, this weird helmet. It doesn't sit on her head, Ray. Her whole face is weird. Like, it just drove me nuts. And then, to to, to top it all off, they introduced William Sadler as I, as I believe her real dad or possible real dad or certainly a friend of James Spader. And I'm suddenly thinking, oh, my God, it's going to be Sadler and Spader. This is amazing. Get rid of the, the, the dumb broad and just have... Sadler and Spader go on a car trip of, of knocking shops in Italy, just boning people and drinking tiny coffees. I'm like, that's what I want to watch. And then they kill Sadler. And I'm like, all right, screw this TV show. I'm not watching it ever again. <laughs> Jeez, John, spoilers. <laughs> well, it's all right. He's only and in like course, well, half an episode. 
It's like a half an episode. I think they just offed him off real quick. I think we, I think Sadler was just only there because he was in between shows and shit. Yeah, Sadler's <laughs> like, I gotta go back to Hawaii Five O and get some of that island money. <laughs> I think he was in. Uh, I think he was actually in. Uh, he was in the Flash for like. A episode and a half in that one too. <laughs> well, yeah, because he's a he's a he's a lead at the moment on. Um, he was on Hawaii Five-O, Five-O for ages, and then isn't he in Power on Showtime? I have no idea. I know. Look, look, look. I know I'm the black guy, and I'm supposed to watch Power. I got to be honest with you. I never watched. I don't watch that show. I watched the first season of that shit. That's about it. Never. I don't watch it like that. If he's in it, I be. I'm good. I'm glad he's in it because I love William Sadler and I just want him to have constant work no matter what. I think he <laughs> so, always will. But you like, know, even, Sadler is eternal. Uh, I think he just will always have eternal. work. I think um, because he's you know relatable to, and a and a mm-hmm. damn fine guy. You know what? Go back to what we talked about way early. We were talking about all those uh, crappy um, teenage shows. Um, there was a show that my wife forced me, forced me to watch. I only made, it's three seasons. I only made the first, two of them. It was a show called Roswell. And he was on it, and fucking Katherine Heigl was on it. And every episode, I said this. If William Sadler don't get up and snap Katherine Heigl's neck, this show is a failure. <laughs> I've made it to season two. Let me tell you something. The show's a goddamn failure. <laughs> so, so whatever. whatever. I, I, I like how we, we, we keep derailing into, like, bad discussions about this TV shows. There's nothing else to talk about, John. Well, that's because they're way more interesting than the movie we're actually supposed so to be talking about. there is about. nothing else to talk about in the show. No, the there movie. isn't. Yeah, I mean, because the main thing is, is... If if the movie was uh, funnier, um, in general, like written funnier, Spader wouldn't have to be overacting. He could do a slightly more subtle neurotic thing, and it would actually be more yeah. entertaining. The trouble is, is that I think he's realized that the script is a dud. I think he realized that like each scene needs way more energy than it has. So I think that he's no trying way. to like, he's trying to just be like, fuck it. I'm just going to try and bring the energy up in every single scene. And the trouble is, is every other actor in the movie, I think is trying to like bring the energy down so that it meets somewhere in the middle. <laughs> actually, it just ends up with Spader looking insane. <laughs> yeah. Actually, that was there. There actually are. There is a couple of moments that I enjoyed. Although I mean, not funny, but that I enjoyed, and those were like. <laughs> oh, no, don't when... get me wrong. It wasn't funny. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nothing, nothing particularly funny. But um, so when when Bill Murray's going over the uh, like when his what's his character's name Scoval or whatever um, is re uh, going over the incidences with uh, like especially in the the elevator with. Uh, James Spader, you know, he's having these. So James Spader has all these like little flashes of either memory or uh, or, or fantasy or whatever. And they're, and they're going through the incidences and Spader is imagining himself as a much more polished, uh, much more like debonair and interesting man. And I and I thought that was like honestly, that's probably how they should have had him playing from the beginning. Right? No, I I completely agree. Like, had had they gone? Because clearly they looked at the script and went, "Well, it's called Speaking of Sex, so get James Spader on the phone." Like that's the first, <laughs> like the guy John right. McNaughton looked at it and went, "Well, it's got sex in the title, so James Spader has to be in it, right?" Um, so that's the first thing. Um, then he called up all his friends, like Bill Murray, who's been in three of his movies. Um, and uh, a bunch of other people who I think have been sort of in his other stuff or he probably are just friends of his in Hollywood. Um, But they get Spader and then they suddenly realize, like I think halfway through the movie, that, oh wait, although his character does have sex with everyone and technically there isn't a woman in the movie that he hasn't had sex with except the pregnant woman in the deposition. And I think he probably made her pregnant, like in a, in a cut scene or something. Because <laughs> he's literally had, he has sex with the, uh, Jay Moore's wife. He's had sex with uh, Lara Flynn Boyle. He's technically had sex with Megan Mullally because they were married together, right? Uh, we don't see it, but technically. So like, there really isn't a woman who in the movie that is, uh, well, except Catherine O'Hara, I guess. But she gets soiled by Bill Murray, which is sort of, He's Spader's lawyer, so it's kind of tangentially as if Spader kind of... Spader probably gave Murray tips on how to get him get O'Hara in the hot tub. That's probably what happened. He got, 
but pretty much she she he got he got sex out of that because of proxy because of, yeah it's a proxy like, spader proxy um i feel like the, you know that's that's probably how half the babies in new york are born but <laughs> but um <laughs> Like the, the reason why so many happy people live in the village where Spader lives is because Spader by proxy. But uh, if you, um, in the, so they're looking at the movie, they're like, it's speaking of sex, it's James Spader, he has sex with everyone in the movie. And then, but then suddenly, somewhere along the line, they, they realize that, oh, but he also has to be the neurotic character. And then Spader's decided to try and like bring the energy of the movie up all the time and trying to like get humor where there isn't any. And it's a valiant attempt, like, it's a really valiant effort to try and make it funny, but it, it just doesn't work because the lines aren't there. And, and the, the, um, and the problem with it is, is if he was playing Spader as his normal, loose, open, flouncy shirt, purse-lipped, drooly self, you would be like, well, this is perfect. This is, this is exactly the movie I want to be watching. But unfortunately, he's playing... He has to try and, like, ring comedy out of this neurotic character, and it kind of takes the, a, a hefty wedge out of his sex and that's the problem is that spader should just be 98 percent sex and two percent intellect and maybe (laughs) point and 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 maybe like no it probably like 1.5 percent intellect and then 0.5 percent some form of silk garment whether it's a shirt or a scarf or (laughs) underpants or something like he has to be wearing silk on him at some point um they changed the ratio i think they changed that ratio in um blacklist because the one thing that my wife loves us about it is the fact that James Spader has a fucking story for fucking everything. You know, yeah. one time I, I was in the Amazon and I knew right. this medicine man, good man, and he just goes to this long fucking story. And at the end, like I guess, like he shot him in the head or some bullshit right, like that. Right, it's always the same fucking it, story, it, just a different spot. Right, exactly. Exactly. What? But what that is is James Spader actually telling stories about his sexual exploits, but just changing it to. <laughs> To shooting someone in the head. Like, it's always what he really means. Oh, they is... got shot in the head already. Right. <laughs> exactly, Mo. See, there you go, Mo. That's there what you go. The... See, Mo but... got... No, see, Mo, actually, Mo has the right idea. The, the writers <laughs> of the blacklist are like, I'm not sure we can come up with any stories, any more stories for you. And James is like, don't worry, I've got a thousand. And he just... He just about- <laughs> knows exactly what to do and where to go. And he just... They just go, that's great. But could you change... And I shot my load in her face too. I shot her in the face, and then he's like, "Easy, no problem, quick rewrite." And that's how they do it. That's how the blacklist is made. I think, I think, uh, uh, what was it? Uh, there was actually one line I meant to mention from Bill Murray that absolutely made me laugh. It's when they had a there was a big fight in the deposition because Jay Moore got mad and enough. He's like, "I'll kill you, kill you." And Jay Spader is like, "Oh," and all that mess. They finally get everybody out, and. Bill Murray is trying to calm everybody down. And it's kind of, you know, there's a laugh here and a laugh there. And just because, again, I'm deprived of comedy, I blurt out laughing. And he points at Jay Moore. You, you lip dip bastard. You're the reason why we all it. I die laughing. <laughs> just the fact that he just pointed at I'm like, you know what? You know what, movie? There you go. That's your one big laugh of the movie. I hope you spent it well. <laughs> <laughs> right. But this now, oh, now oh, let me ask God. you something. Was there any, did either of you guys find it, because there's sex throughout the movie in different scenes and stuff like that, but there's this whole sequence in the deposition where she's explaining graphically uh, what Spader did to her. And again, it's weird that Bill Murray doesn't quite know how to play it, because you would assume that he would know how to play the scene. The scene is meant to be almost like a, a Mel Brooks scene, like tell us again about like the, the sex you guys were having, or even like... Um, uh, like a naked gun scene, like with everyone like leaning over the table and sweating, and then finally falling over the table or whatever. Um, or is that loaded weapon? I forget. But like one of those, like it's meant to be a scene like that, where of course in a deposition people wouldn't be talking about like he circled my nipples with his tongue or whatever. But like in this movie, it's meant to be funny and heightened, and everyone's meant to be getting hot under the collar and stuff like that. But it, 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 what's weird is they don't really play it like that. Like the that's how it's written, I think, but for some reason it's not acted or edited or whatever like Wait, that. It, it sort of doesn't come off very mouth. well. But, but then... It, it's, that's the real problem. It just doesn't come off that way. Right. So it, then it's they mildly all... where it's like, instead of it actually being sexy, it's like, wow, that was sexy. Here's me. I mean, yeah, but 
Come the fuck on, guys. Like, but that's the really? problem. That's... Is, is making it sexy, and maybe this is her problem, is that she didn't act it in the way she should have. She acted it like trying to be both mild but also sort of knowingly sexy. Um, and she should have maybe played it up a bit more. I think the problem is by making it um, the way she played it, which was sort of, I guess, semi-realistic, is that it actually made you feel... Like, you can't get a laugh out of that. You know what I mean? It's, it, it's almost slightly awkward and slightly weird, but also slightly pervy and slightly... Like, the, the, the just everything about it was sort of tonally wrong, is what I'm trying to say. But then they all go out to the bathroom and everyone's like, oh, I've got to, like, mop my brow and, oh, I'm so hot under the collar and all this sort of stuff, right? Which was also a complete waste of time. And then when they come back into the deposition room, the Indian guy who's running the camera... And the pregnant woman <laughs> who is taking the, the notes of the deposition are, like, standing up against the table, and he's sort of, like, manhandling this pregnant woman's breasts. And I'm just... I know they think it's a joke. I know they think that, oh, ha, 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 like, bursting in and finding this couple, like, like rubbing each other's nipples is funny. But, like, it just... I was just like, wait a minute. The deposition scene was just sort of weird and creepy. Then I come in and there's like a pregnant woman having her nipples rubbed, and I'm just like, "Well, that's that's unpleasant." And it would, I mean, and I know it's it was. Just, I don't know. It depends on your kink, really. No, no, no. True. I'm no, say, I, I'm say, yeah. so, no, no. I get. Oh, no, no. What what I'm trying to say is, it's unpleasant if you're trying to watch a comedy. Is what I mean. It's not unpl- like I, I'm not trying to be like a prude or whatever. No, like you said it right. You said it- no, 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 you said it correctly. Here's the problem. I just mean totally, it it's funny. way off, is what it I mean. It wasn't funny. Right. It just wasn't funny. The point, you could make that scene work because, first of all, I guess because, like you said, and tonally, it doesn't work because if the tone was set as it was, it, it was more so it was said and therefore, oh, it's sexy. It really wasn't. It was just more so, huh, all right. Hope you had a good time. That's all it was. It wasn't like, you know, like, oh, my God, I got to jerk off right now. You know, it wasn't like that. But that's the way they played it. So it was more of just the way they played it. It was supposed to be that way. So when you come in there and these two are trying to bone, you know, trying to rub each other's nipples, it doesn't come off funny. It just comes off like, dude, really? Come on. Do your job. It it, it comes off more like that. And and her being pregnant is just a really weird, like, part of the scene. You know, that was kind of. That really was kind of weird, like you know, like like I don't give a, you know, like hey, look, if you look, print the shit, your thing, go ahead, man, I, you know, go ahead, whatever. Uh, I I don't I don't care, but at the same time, it was like it it, it kind of made it more like, okay, that fucking happened, <laughs> right? It's <laughs> not a laugh scene. Little... You you don't suddenly go, it's a laugh scene. When it comes up on the screen, you're going, wait, what, what, what's happening? And then everyone walks in, and you're like, oh wait, that was meant to be like a a naughty, you know, and and then sort of a, a thing to get, like, walked in on as if it was, like, a sex romp or something. But I think one thing... OK, so this is the other thing that's incredible. Like, Mo, Mo and I, and, and probably yourself, D, we've watched a lot of, like, the 80s sex romps, right? And growing up in the UK, I have yeah. watched tons of the carry-on films, which were the uh, 60s and 70s British sex romps that kind of led to a lot of the sort of 80s farces. And they're all farces which is essentially like yes everyone is trying to have sex but ultimately people are running in and out of doors people's trousers are falling down people are being caught like having sex in weird (laughs) places you know people are doing uh, uh, aerobics and their bras fly off or whatever it is it's all very like cheeky end of the pier run around slapstick uh uh romp fast type movie but with like sex in it right and essentially that's what this movie is sort of or i think that's what james spader is trying to be in this movie but you mix it with the guy who made like wild things and henry portrait of a serial killer and stuff like that and like the 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 sex is not like there's nothing funny so much about the sex and there's nothing like farcical necessarily about what they're doing because it's a legal deposition and, like, they try and do it, but it doesn't quite work. And it just, it, you know, and then the end is meant to be this big thing where they're all at this cabin and they were just having sex and then him and Lara Flynn Ball have sex. And I'm like, well, you've kind of missed the point of what a kind of sex romp is. Yes, you're showing a lot of sex, but, like, that's not that's not really where the joke comes from. The joke is not like, exactly. oh, great, they're all having sex now. 
And and I think the way he filmed the sex was sort of a little bit. Um, it's not realistic, but it, it's it's certainly more like a soft core. Uh, thriller type sex scenes rather than a sex romp sex scene and there's sort of a difference yeah. like in a sex romp sex scene there's always something ludicrous happening and I suppose in this one there was the scene where she noticed there was a helicopter outside but I'm like so wait the joke is that she's noticed there's a hospital helicopter that's throwing blood somewhere at while she's having sex like how is what is that like how is that a yeah, joke that- like yeah, that was weird. And there was another, you know, at the very end, uh, you see all the people. They was all the all these this line of people that were trying to get on the elevator. I guess to have sex on the, on that same elevator. Yeah, right? I didn't really get the joke of that scene. And here's at the all. problem, and that's and that's where it, the and see to me that shows you the problem. Now the joke itself, I like okay, I get it. There's a person that the one I, one thing I was interested there was a one, man and a woman with a blow up doll and I said okay they're going to have a three way with a blow up doll that's actually kind of hilarious to me but um but that's that shows me the problem with the movie okay okay that show, that just because to me that proved me that the movie was done so so wrong because there was nothing funny enough to warrant that, that joke at the end if it was one thing where everybody that touched that fucking elevator, they automatically banged, or they banged at that elevator more than once, anything. The whole movie to me was written, not directed at all. It just felt like it was one of those things like, let's just get through this fucking movie. We just made this fucking movie. Let's just get through it. Get through this scene. Get through that scene. Get through this scene. Get through that scene. We're done. And that's well, that's how that's how I felt watching it. Yeah, right. and that's what I'm saying. Yeah, there like were, he, there there were was jokes it, that happened, and nothing happened really. Like, nothing really happened. Even the scene where I just forgot this as well. There was this scene where um, the two lawyers call up separate private investigators, except unknown to them, the private investigators really live in the same house and are lovers, and like they call each other up while the private investigators are having sex on the phone. Um, oh, they're having sex. They're both on the phone, and then the lawyers are on the phone. So it's like a kind of when Harry met Sally split screen thing with these two people having yeah, sex yeah, in the yeah. middle, and and one lawyer one side and the other lawyer the other side. And the the what was so weird about the sequence was that like there was <laughs> they hadn't written any jokes. They just went, oh, it'll be funny that they're having sex while they're on the phone because they'll be moaning and groaning and stuff. But like it wasn't like there was, are you feeling all right? Are you feeling all right? Or like, um, uh, I don't know, like, oh, I'm coming, I'm coming. What do you mean you're coming? I haven't told you where to go yet. Or something like that. Like, there, there would be at least... No, there was no joke. And, and so you're sort of it's... watching it going, well, wait a minute. And they're sort of having, again, not like realistic sex, but sort of, you know, softcore... Um, like unrealistic sex. Yeah. Unrealistic like, sex. Kind of like... Um, it's almost on the same level of... Um, it's almost on the same level. You know when you see somebody like in a um actually a good example of it. Um because I know you watched all those movies. You like the Sleepaway Camp movies. You remember the second Love one where, um, Camp. Yeah. where um Yeah, the second one or the third one, it doesn't matter. One in, in those sequels, you would hear Angela say something like like she will say like a one liner. And to me, and it's almost like, Who did you say that for? In the context of this scene, right. who did you say that for? Her brother who was that Bruce Prince. In this scene, exactly. But it was still. But in this sense, in this sense, it's like so they're both having sex, and the people on the other end don't know that they're having sex. Okay, I get the joke, but where's the punchline? Right. Where's the punchline? It's just funny because they're having sex. Because you know, the point of a sex romp or a point of a sex comedy is that they're supposed to be that second part comedy. Is it just funny that because? Having sex is not funny, really. It really ain't funny unless there's a well, clearly you've never had sex with me. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, it's gonna be the- <laughs> soon, Mo. Soon we will have our day. <laughs> like, oh, but now no. that's a, now that's sex comedy. Now this is you know what? I'm with you, John. It wasn't no like, but you hear the guy on the other like, oh, oh. It's like, wait, what's that going in the background? Oh, nothing. None of that. There was no joke at all. 
So and 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 that's what was so frustrating. That was just really what was so frustrating. Like there's supposed to be comedy to this, and it goes back to the thing. Like I just remember there's a guy who's in a helicopter. They're giving blood. Like what the fuck does that got to do with anything? Right. That's you know, not sexy. Do you know what I felt like? I felt like it was it was the kind of movie right where you'd be like a teenager or whatever, and. You, you'd, you'd see it and you'd go, oh, it's a Bill Murray comedy or a James Spader comedy or whatever. And you'd put it on and your, your parents would come into the room, right, and would sit down. And you're like, what are you watching? Oh, it's a James Spader, Bill Murray comedy. Oh, okay, great. We'll watch this then. And, like, all of a sudden they would just be bombarded with these endless, relentless sex scenes. And it would be <laughs> one of those things where you're like, I, th- I thought this was a Bill Murray comedy, honestly. And, like, your parents would be looking at you like, what the fuck did we just watch? Like, it's that kind of movie, yeah. right? It's not funny. It's awkward. It's, it's, like, it's, it's like nervous and creepy and awkward, and it just doesn't hit the mark. Like, it's so... Anyway, that's, that's, I think I've you know, said about all I can so say about it. <laughs> you know what? There's only one more thing that we have not mentioned, and I have to mention it. Because my wife is going to get mad at me if we don't bring this up. What the fuck was up with the with the accordion and didgeridoo music in the fucking in the in the movie? Like you were here, this you were here. Like what was going on with the fucking soundtrack? I t- I'll tell you exactly. D, I'll tell you exactly what it was. It was someone watched the movie and went fuck. This isn't funny at all. So where we can't like, there's even a bit right at the end where. For the whole movie, we're told that Jay Moore um, can't get an erection, right? So that at the end of the movie, when he gets an erection, literally the sound man is like, God, I've got to try and make this funny in some way. I've just sat through 90 minutes. I want to kill myself. So he literally puts on the soundtrack like a ba-doing. Like, like literally puts on like a ridiculously over-the-top spring sound. Mm. And that's the same with the soundtrack. They're doing that and the biddly beep, biddly did did it did it like the accordion thing in order to try and like, I don't know, uh, Benny Hill the thing up a bit, and it just doesn't work. Yeah, see, like, the, pro- well, the problem is they, they got the music, but they forgot to put it in fast motion. No, there's even a no, but Mo, they didn't. There's a sequence at the end where they run down the stairs in fast motion. There's actually a sequence in this movie where ah, they're all running that's along. That's supposed fa- to be funny, right? And you're like, at least have someone's pants fall down. There was no bald man having his head polished. No one's pants fell down. No one's top flew off. Like, it was all wrong. Everything about it was wrong. You put yakety sacks on there and have a couple of people's clothes fall off, uh, you know, like a nun or something, and have Benny Hill run past and go, ooh, missus, and then, then you've got a film. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, in the words of Peter Griffin, oh, my God, somebody throw a pie. <laughs> somebody. Right. Throw a pie. That I, I think happened. you have now. I'm not a huge, not a huge fan of Family Guy, but like you have summed it up, D. That is exactly you finish this movie and you go for for the love of God, will someone throw a pie? That is the metaphor of this movie. I completely agree. You know, like, like I said, it, like I said, I'm I'm I when I say I liked it, I liked it in the sense of you know what? I can say I watched it. <laughs> Yeah, I'll, t- I'll add that to my list. Movies <laughs> I have seen. I have seen. D, D went into it. I made it. it through that. D went into it with his level set so very low. <laughs> his bar was oh so my God. very you know what, low. You know since, beca- since becoming a, cr- uh, a, a, a movie critic, I set my bar so low when it comes to certain things now. <laughs> so I just do it. He actually has three lists that he keeps. One is <laughs> movies that he's seen. One is movies that he's liked. And the other one is white people. <laughs> right. Oh yeah, and I do have and I feel and I feel I feel like this one just it gets a firm check in the third box. Oh, fuck yeah. Oh, this is this is such oh, this my is God, it does. Yeah, this is such a uh, uh, yeah, just white. You just you should watch a day. There should be a mo- There should be a thing where this movie plays on TV or something late at night, and then at the very end, you just look at the camera and go, "White people, am I right?" And it just goes, wah, wah, wah. <laughs> D, 
D, D, not to give you not to give you any ideas because you've already got like nine shows going right now. But I mean, uh, honestly, you know, if you started a podcast and called it White People Movies, I'd uh, fucking listen to it. <laughs> I, 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 this is not even a joke. I think one of my friends he does something like that. Where I, I have like um, two other friends where they go in, in, into this thing, this um segment of their show to call all right. White people news and white people news. Sorry, Mo. It's your state. It's always something to have. It's Florida, always okay? fucking Florida. It's yeah. always fucking Florida. But I have nobody because I and I always um admired that about uh, at least my at least three black geeks. We would do movies that most of our friends was like, wow, why would y'all do that shit? Because you know nobody else does it. And it's weird. Only a few black shows really try to go into white people territory. We right, I can right. say we never really have yet. Oh, what's going to happen? I just don't know when. <laughs> I just don't know when. All right, well, you, well when, when you guys you do your episode on The Notebook, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Bro? Actually, you know what? You know what? You know what? Make okay, you, a little you have to now more. do an episode on The Notebook. <laughs> <laughs> God, I won't. Knock on wood. But um, I won't. You three, know what? I will three Black Geeks stuff. presents The Notebook, Titanic, and, and, and Love Actually. <laughs> Oh, you know what? We, no, 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 it'd be the notebook, love actually, and like the time traveler's wife. <laughs> wow. Or Kate and Leopold. Wow. The movie wow. with Meg Ryan and. <laughs> what's his name? No, fuck no. no. Oh, Kate what's, Ryan. What's, the uh, one, what's, what's that uh, shitty one where, they, where they're like, they're writing letters back and forth to each other and we find out that, that like, actually it's like time traveling? <laughs> that was a Keanu Reeves movie. Oh, yeah. Lake House. Fucking. Yeah, yeah, the lake house. There you go. There's another one for your movie. <laughs> hey, uh, to be really honest with you, to be really honest with you, I did not like the movie, but I thought it was kind of sweet. All right, I do, I'll admit that. I thought it was kind of sweet. All right, I like all right, all right. that was that was bad, but I, right, you know, whatever. <laughs> but, but I don't think we have reached that level of white people. <laughs> oh, all right, we well, let, let me know when you do your episode on the proposal. <laughs> the proposal. You know what? I'm just. I will give you this though, Mo. Um, my, me and my wife, <laughs> and I'm so surprised that nobody from, well, that's because I don't think enough of them listen to us. Uh, the people in, that run the whole DC um, uh, critics on group that, that that we're a part of, I don't think nobody heard that review I did. But it was me and my wife, and me and my wife admitted off the break that we got a bootleg copy of Fifty Shades of Grey, and. <laughs> Because one of us had to fucking watch the movie. It was a week before Black Panther, and we couldn't get tickets for it for whatever reason. But I was like, fuck it. I know somebody got that shit on bootleg, so we found a copy of it. Me and my wife watched it because, hey, she read the book. I, we got to finish this son of a bitch. We saw the first two. And finally, at least, like midway through the, uh, through the podcast, me and my wife was talking. And I said something that happened in, my, in the movie. My wife was like, yeah. White people. <laughs> <laughs> but did you watch the parody, the Fifty Shades of Black or whatever the parody version was as well? Did you watch that? Because I'm I'm one of the fifty percent of black people that do not like Marlon Wayans. So no, I didn't watch it. Yeah, me too. I think you could just say fifty percent of people. I think fifty percent of people do not like Marlon Wayans. <laughs> Like he's, got, he's got that new show on TV that just looks fucking terrible. You know what? Here's the thing. I get why people like Marlon Wayans, but me is like, yo, dude, it, it's not 2004 no more. You're not funny like anymore ever. But I don't know why. He's never been funny without his brothers. Not his brothers at all. That's the one thing that always got me. Even even in a dud, even when, in one of the uh, what was it the dance movie they had? Um, mm-hmm. Even in that dud of a movie. Everybody had a funny line except Marlon, and that kind of shocked me. Like Kim Wayans, the fourth, the the three scenes she was in, actually hilarious. Um, Sean, she's pretty funny. She just doesn't do a lot. Here's the funny thing: Sean, who's usually the weakest brother of all of them, right. Sean had the funniest parts of the whole movie because he was the the baby father that would just show up <laughs> just out of nowhere. It was kind of funny. Marlon had a whole full on scene dedicated to him. I did not laugh. I, I was like, wow, who would have thought? D, if I would have told D in 1999, who was watching the Wayans Brothers every day, hey, D, Marlon, yeah, he's not going to be funny by, by this year. I would say bullshit. <laughs> I just, All right, guys. Like, that's shocking. So 
Uh, one last thing that we always do on our sleazy spader springtime movies is that um, we talk about this. We have this idea, Jim and I, who have done the, the series for the last two years. We have this idea that James Spader has like a sex dungeon. And in his sex dungeon um, at his home, he has mementos from all the movies that he's done that he finds <laughs> particularly weird or sexual. And it's never not. it's never what you would think. It's not like... Um, something obviously sexual. It's something that's slightly weird. Like the thing that you would look at and you go, really, he would take that and have sex with it. That's disgusting. Um, considering this movie is already kind of like a bit weirdly sexual and weird, sexually weird, um, it might be difficult. But what do you think um, is, oh, the, is, the, is, is the is the is the spade memento that he took from this movie? Um, that he then uh, has at home. What do you think it is? All right, all right, all right. Mo, you all right. Go let, me, let me let me go let, let me go first on this one because I have an idea that immediately sprang to mind, and that is a pun. Um, I think that he took home the cork from the champagne bottle at the end of the film that he shoves up his own ass <laughs> to uh, massage his prostate into uh, while he masturbates. Okay. So you're you're saying that he went with the the champagne cork from the from the final scene? Yes. All right, D. What what are you going with? No, Mo. Fuck you, because I was about to say the same thing with that champagne. <laughs> that that's the exact reason Ooh. why why I said I want to go first on this one because I had a feeling Ooh. we were thinking of the so same thing. Right for that champagne bottle that went up his ass. <laughs> um. Okay. Um. Actually. Um. Mm. Mm, no, no, that sounds disgusting. That's just really disgusting. That's oh, the, say no, it. no, say and, it. And you say it. Say That's it. the I whole point. You have to say it now. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You know the um, you know the um, the, the you are. Right, you remember Jay Moore's brother made that cheap um box cover of his wife that was a of his wife and it had like a Photoshop naked body on there. Yes. Yes. That. He that. took that. He took that. I yeah, think I think crossed on it. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think he, well, so, he so made, what you're saying is like what you're saying is like he'll like look at it while he masturbates and when he comes on the wall, like he'll stick it to the wall a la Philip Seymour Hoffman's character from Happiness. <laughs> oh, oh God. Accurate, I, yes. <laughs> I I I have something and I think that I I, th I, li I like your choices. I think your choices are good. I, I I'm going to show you kind of where I think Spader's head is really at. Right. So I think he took two things from this movie. I think he took, and it's not like a um, a, a bucket or a glass or a regular receptacle. It's like one of those um, uh, science lesson beakers, and I think he filled it up with some of the hot tub water. That Bill Murray and Catherine O'Hara were in, <laughs> and, and I think he has a you know what, science he beaker had... filled with uh, Bill Murray and Catherine O'Hara hot tub water. He definitely took some hot tub water, um, and maybe he occasionally, like a like a perverted um, Hannibal Lecter, instead of feeding his guests uh, um, uh, human meat. Uh, what he does is he sprinkles some of the hot tub water like over dessert or something as he serves it up. Uh, and they don't realize because it's like pudding or something that he's serving up at some sexual soiree. But little do they know that there's just a, a splash of Catherine O'Hara and Bill Murray hot tub water. So he definitely took that. Uh, definitely. I can bet now. Right now, John, I can imagine somebody like, oh, this is good. No, this pudding tastes like balls. <laughs> And then the other thing that he took from this movie. This pudding's a little salty. <laughs> the other thing that he pudding took from, tastes this, like car from this movie <laughs> is he took the fake belly harness that the pregnant stenographer was wearing. <laughs> <laughs> and he has that hung up in his sex dungeon over the top uh, of some of uh, the hot tub water. That's what he took from the movie. I think, you know, 
Yes, he probably did shove the cork up his ass. And yeah, of course, he's got those photographs. In fact, he probably made... You know how, like, Jeff Bridges... On, on Jeff Bridges' movies, he takes, like, those panoramic photographs with that special camera he has, and he, like, gives the, yeah. the, the cast a book at the end of it? I think James Spader... <laughs> took all the nude bodies from that collage the guy was making and he stuck all the cast's heads on <laughs> nude bodies, like, creepily. Like, so they don't... gave him a book. Gave him a book, him a book, book of all the... <laughs> of all the pictures. I can now... Now I can imagine Larry Flynn Boyles like this. I'm gonna call... I, I, I know it. One day I'm gonna have to call the FBI. I oh, no, know now, now Larry Flynn, Boyle can, Larry Flynn Boyle can look at that and go, oh, so that's what I'd look like with big tits. <laughs> wow! Wow! So you mean if I eat a steak, that's how big I get? Wow! I, I, no, you know there there there's only two moments in this film where you actually get to see a little, uh, like the tiniest glimpse of nipple, you know. And Lara Flynn Boyle yeah, is one of them. Yeah, you know what? That's actually the problem I had. There yeah, this tits- should have had way more nudity, like way more. No, you know, I, 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 you know, it, it reminds me of a time where I. I'll never forget it. I was like 20 years old. I was at my parents. We, I was still living with my parents, and I forgot whatever movie we was watching, and it was boring as hell. And I got loud. Hey, was I, it I got speaking loud. of sex? <laughs> <laughs> it might have been, but I remember loudest day. Like you know, I like mom, forgive me, dad. My dad was like, yeah, I need to see some titties. My dad just starts laughing. <laughs> Where's the nudity at? Give me something to do. <laughs> God. Oh. So, so I think we've I think we've well and truly gone into this movie and the TV output of almost everyone who's in it or tangentially in it. Uh, we've also we talked, did a damn good job. We did. We we, yeah. we we did fail to do one thing, and that's we should have talked about Ellen Burstyn more. But that's okay. That's okay. It's we don't fine. need to go into it now. It's fine. We got the one joke that made you laugh about Megan Mullally <laughs> peeing on a carpet. <laughs> That's exactly. all we need. Um, and we've also picked out what James Bader would put in his sex dungeon. I think that we've done a damn fine job. Uh, we were the men to do it. It was a very difficult movie to have to review, considering uh, I didn't really want to think about it ever again or talk about it ever again. So thank you ever so much, uh, D and Mo. Uh, D, why don't you start and just let us know where people can find you and what shows you have going on, where people can listen, and all the good stuff. Pimp your stuff, buddy. Yes, I will. Um, three black geek, bleh, three black geeks dot com. The number three, black geeks dot com. All one word. Um, we had a rough. Our last month was rough, but whatever it doesn't matter. Um, we just had our two hundred fiftieth episode. That was with. Oh Mr. yeah, who? Yeah, who was on that episode? Um, you, Mr. Fournay. <laughs> I think it was you. Yes, we did Leonard Part Six. It was a movie that we wanted to do for a long time. We finally did it. Um, currently, Ooh, topical. Month, John, I got. I got to tell I you, they they roped me in with the with the possibility of doing disorderlies, and then they're like, "No, nope, we're going to do Leonard Part Six." And I'm like, "But I already said yes." Oh no, that's <laughs> you the know, worst, oh, guys. The, you. The, heard... well, you, the problem you, was you literally there... cosbied him. You like cosbied yeah, him. Yeah, literally. Yeah, what you did. We peeled cosbied you, man. But uh... it's all right. It's all right. I consented. <laughs> this mo- uh, <laughs> this uh this month is gonna be is just so wacky. Um, as far as movies, um, I know the next time sh- next movie we want to do. Mo, you probably heard of this movie. You ever heard the movie called Stone Cold with um Brian Bosworth? Uh, yes. Yeah, and that's so is such a great movie, <laughs> dude. Dude, I can't wait to talk about uh, 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 who's it? Uh, Lance Henderson's fucking six pack. Oh, oh my god, such, dude! Such anyway, a great movie. Yeah, yeah, that's a great that movie. Said, but that, but that being said, the only big thing we have coming up is um our summer series. We always do a summer series of movies, much like you do um um much like you do um your um do sleazy, sleazy spader. We every summer we do something different. This year we decided to do um, uh, American movies. We call American. American, with no A, American Summer is going to be all American movies that's basically like, you know, patriotic movies. Um, Team America, Delta Force, um, Executive Decision, um, and uh, I forgot there was another movie I care. Oh, yeah, Independence Day, of course. So that's our big thing we're going to have for the summer. That's about it. 3BlackGeeks.com. You can look up everything we got. That's it. Awesome. All right. <clears throat> and Mo, where can they find you, sir? 
Uh, no, here and there, I guess. No, uh, <laughs> apart from steaming right. up the windows of James Spader's sex dungeon, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm still doing No Budget Nightmares. It's the only active show I have going at the moment. Uh, you can find all of our past and present episodes at No Budget podcast.com um, you can find us on Facebook just do a search no budget nightmares uh, while is one word and um, yeah you might you'll, you're gonna want to check out this most recent episode we did a really fucking bizarre and brilliant uh, Japanese movie called bloody bodybuilder uh, no bloody muscle bodybuilder from hell which is credited as the Japanese evil dead um, it's not but you know, it's weird because in- there already was a movie from Japan that they called The Evil Dead. But yeah, well, this this one has a weird history. It was filmed in '95 and then sort of left dormant until about 2012 or 2009. Uh, didn't get a U.S. release until 2015, and it shows. Uh, it's goofy. It's a lot of fun. Uh, me and Doug talk about it. Uh, you're going to want to not listen to the previous episode before that, uh, where we covered uh, Jesus Christ Serial Rapist. Yeah, uh, because that was really fun for me to fucking sit through. I got the... <laughs> oh, my God. What a fucking... And you episode. told me not to listen to it. <laughs> I, I did. I very specifically said, don't listen to it. Uh, nobody should ever watch that movie. It's fucking terrible. And, and I don't even give a shit about the religious aspects of it. Because uh, there aren't any, you know, just title, title alone. Uh, but yeah, it's a real piece of shit. Anyway, um, I, you know that, that that that's me. Face Facebook. I, I guess I technically have a Twitter. Uh, I'm at drunk on VHS. I never go on there. <laughs> And you can also find a lot of Mo's uh, back episodes of Drunk on VHS uh, on the AfterMovieDiner dot com, where uh, sure. the kind of uh, Official, what's what's the word now? Catalog? What's the word? Uh, official Ar- archive. archive is the archive. word. That's it. Yeah. The official archive lives at. And, I, and I have I have a bunch more episodes. I got to get to you at some point too. But I mean, obviously, it's not a huge rush. <laughs> well, guys, nobody's out there we... clamoring for old fucking drunk on VHS episodes. Yeah, we, we, so. all got, we all are. We all are. I have one that we were on with you, Mo. Uh, I think that was uh, New Jack City. I got to look for that one I, because apparently. Apparently, my second in command doesn't fucking have that on his computer, so I have to find. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know you're hearing this, Chris. Yes, motherfucker, you ain't got it. <laughs> <laughs> well, gentlemen, thank you ever so much for joining me on this episode and uh, contributing to Sleazy Spader Springtime Three. Tis the sleazen. Uh Thanks ever so much, and uh, until next time, uh, goodbye and all the best to everyone listening. Good night, folks. Good night. Sunny day. Time again to break away. I don't mind, but I just can't stay. Sunny.
Get up our back.